uh, dear participants, uh, you are welcome to the 30th webinar of the Sri Lanka Export Development Board. Uh, we have uh, today uh, a timely topic. It is uh, uh, exactly important and uh, uh, it is our uh, great focus to empower and support uh, startups and SMEs. Uh, uh, the, the topic is uh, startup companies export readiness uh, winning in export markets. So uh, we have uh, our resource person today, Mr. Dinesh Dishilla. Uh, he's a very experienced uh, uh, expert on the subject. Let me to introduce him uh, very shortly. Uh, he has uh, 35 years experience in shipping and international trade, supply chain and logistics with a uh, leading uh, multinational fast moving consumer goods company in Sri Lanka. Uh, furthermore, he is a SME trainer, coach for the export industry and he is the past chairman of the Importers and Shippers Associations uh, supporting trade, facilitation and industry solutions. And he also a member of the advisory committee uh, of the EDB on logistics uh, under the national export strategy. And also he was a member of the uh, advisory committee of the trade facilitation of the EDB. And uh, his contribution towards uh, trade facilitation in this country is enormous. And uh, uh, before uh, handing over uh, to the session uh, to Mr. Dinesh, I would like to uh, remind uh, our participants, we will start Q&A session uh, after 40 or 45 minutes uh, of the presentation. Uh, Participants can submit the issue, uh, the questions, and any clarification you need in the Q and A session. Uh, you can see in the bottom of the bottom of your screen. So, uh, uh, thank you very much, and participants. It is uh, the time, Mr. Dinesh, uh, to you to start the presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Indrakirti, uh, giving that introduction about me. Um, also, um, I am uh, extremely happy for inviting me for this webinar. I appreciate Export Development Board's efforts uh, to educate and safeguard exporters, importers, or whoever the traders in the country, you know, also providing various uh, services uh, that the trade needs for the uh, for them to be in business. Um, okay. Uh, good afternoon to all participants as well. Uh, let us uh, start um, this webinar by understanding uh, about the the fundamentals of the business needs, especially when it comes to uh, SMEs and startups uh, in the country. Uh, maybe you all know, um, according to research, there are about 500,000 SMEs uh, in the country, each employing about uh, three to five people on average in their businesses. Uh, at the same time, some are self-employed, some are not even registered. But uh, total uh, taken, it is well more than 500,000. And then uh, it's amazing to see the estimated GDP contribution from this group is uh, more than 52%. And... Uh, Unfortunately, this country doesn't have accurate data numbers in place, uh, like in a portal, because these data are essential for business community 
uh, for analytical purposes and it's a uh, even for government to structure the sector for future improvements so i think um, as a as a as an institution uh, it is important that we try and uh, edb plan uh, setting up a, a portal uh, like that and also this smes are currently contributing over 70% to the economy of this country and this is a point that doing business is very very tougher and even it is getting very challenging so therefore uh, the groups that who have joined here the participants um should understand that international trade is not easy as you think and uh, you got to know uh much more than you think about international trade for you to be in business so uh getting back to the top topic uh if we if we analyze doing local business and doing international business are very different from each other um when you are when you are specially uh, entering into uh, international business it is extremely dangerous just trying to copy someone who is doing international business i mean there is a there is a tendency in a society that when you see someone else doing import export so another party might think okay let me also do it we are, we are, the reason that uh, why we say it is dangerous is that you may be assuming that particular business or a person from the external view without knowing the internal challenges that the business is going through uh, that is why we want to share some of the important points uh, with you today that could become very handy uh, in your business whenever you feel that uh, you feel that uh, it is important for you so in my in my flyer i would have seen that i have brought an example of saying uh, it is in a uh, international trade is like uh, when you're dealing uh, playing this game it's like slippery wicket those who know i mean most of the people in this country knows cricket so slippery wicket means it's extremely difficult to bat or a ball on that kind of wicket so you don't know how the how the ball will behave uh, you don't know what decisions whether you are going to play on front foot back foot whole hook whatever you don't you can't predict such a such a difficult situation that you face when the wicket is slippery so likewise even in international trade when you don't know and you think you are managing it it becomes extremely uh dangerous for the simple reasons that you will hear when we talk when we go on talking how how risky that we are doing our businesses especially when it comes to international trade right now i think in this group today there must be listeners from different stages uh some may not have any idea about business some must be having little knowledge about local business and at the same time some may be having local strong business thinking to export uh another group could be there uh you have initial uh you have done some initial uh, exports and exports would have gone wrong and maybe you have lost lot of investment and there could be another part, uh, group uh, you have done some initial few exports a uh, new starters everything is going well and you all are happy and also there's a there's a there could be a group where you have you have been very well doing uh, export business inter international trade business for a long time but still going on a roller coaster right so many ups and downs but 
still in business happy but still you want to fix certain gaps for improvement i will not focus uh, the big financially strong companies in this particular uh, discussion as uh, they are operating on a very uh, very high level structure and they have deep pockets they are financially stable and they have uh, expertise working for those companies and uh, they can absorb any kind of impact even things go wrong but you must remember a startup and a small sme or even even a little more than even a semi cannot uh, absorb the shocks the losses that you will suddenly face when you are in uh, international trade business so um coming back to the topic firstly uh, i would like to advise for those who have uh, the liking to do business try to convert your hobby to business to business and start small that is the little bit of advice that i can give you a person who is really thinking about doing exports um uh, why i say that is like uh, you must have a very strong liking towards what you like to do with your strong desire you will build commitment because end of the day you will need unlimited amount of uh, commitment if you want to become a become an exporter importer or to that matter to be in international trade business um now when you are uh, i'm 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 trying to cover all groups whoever who has uh, who is participating today when you are talking about export readiness and win with win in export markets you must be getting a uh, you must be getting a picture in your mind what are we talking of okay um so which means whatever you see grow have in this country you want that particular product or item that has to be available in a different country different market so all that said that simple uh, to do that it's a, it's extremely extremely difficult so for any person you must have a focus on the product that you are trying to export now for you to think about this product or product range uh you have to have some um, kind of weird thinking within you what is the item that i'm going to select that i'm trying to deal with because you have to understand the the line that you are going to work on based on which you will build the long term and short term targets goals based on which you will achieve your end goal so all of us can't uh one can't waste time you know uh therefore when you are putting your um, timelines uh, allow sufficient time but don't uh, don't uh, set your own timelines very short so that it, there will be pressure building up on your own and at the same time you cannot afford to waste time as well and always like trying to uh, do trial and error so that is not on this this international trade business is so complex therefore you don't have time to waste neither you have trial and error and uh, keep things making right so you have to make many things first time right so it's something important that you have to think well about a product a product range a product line what you are going to do then uh in an international trade you would have heard the word vuca now we say you are living in a vuca world so vuca world is to say that they analyze the situations um 
in various dimensions and those are uncontrollable and those are uncontrollable environments so uh, voca stands for volatility uh, uncertainty complexity and ambiguity so these are very common very common stuff when you get into uh, when you get into uh, international trade okay with this with this uh, background when when you think now uh, to decide that you are export ready it's not simply that you are ready for an export but then after the export are you are you ready to survive can you continue can you sustain what you have done so to have that in mind uh, i suggest uh, to many of you uh, what according to your time permits you must take you must try to take a basic import export course which gives procedures which will lay down procedures which we cannot uh, cover within a short time it will be about say 3 week and uh, 3 weeks or 6 months or 4 weeks whatever the periods i think if you contact export development board they will guide you through a course short term at least short term course i think anyone who wants to get involved in international business must do because you got to be familiar with some terms uh some regulations basic stuff that you should know uh the, the 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 coaches or the the lecturers will take you through when you are doing a course and then while you are getting equipped with that you got to be very confident about your product product like i said earlier when you think of a product you got to be confident about the product because it is going to leave this country and appear in a different country in a market so that has a that has to be sold to consumers so therefore you should be confident about your product that stands steady and with other characteristics it will be sellable in good shape and condition in the overseas market so you must build confidence we will discuss how you how you build confidence then um, when you are getting ready you will the biggest next problem will be you will have a product you may have confidence but then your next problem is going to be to whom am i going to sell everyone will say i want to export i want to export but then what to do an export you need two parties one is the uh, seller and there has to be a buyer so then this is one of the most difficult things uh apart from credit arrangements this is a difficult thing to to arrange to establish to build so then uh how do you technically get these informations across to you so there is quite a lot of research that you got to do uh, in today's world uh internet is very simply available you have to search through uh there are there are trade sections in embassies and this oh, this program is organized by export development board who has most of the information there are trade delegations there are trade fairs organized then there are foreign visits obviously now during corona things are different but of course there are virtual exhibitions and i suggest that you register with adb in their databases so that you will have a regular flow of information about connecting with potential buyers apart from that don't stop there you may be having your classmates schoolmates relations um those who are staying abroad so when you are having personal chats encourage them to become your buyer a partner so little little discussions with those 
very well known guys because trust matters a lot in a transaction so you if you know the party very well and if you can trust majority of the risk part is gone when you really get into uh, actual transactions so you have to work around work a lot in building and picking up potential buyers and then you can also use uh in today's in today's context you must have your own website uh because there is more than more than in today's context than shipping large quantities there is another space that is getting developed which is e-commerce so e-commerce selling also you got to know small quantities b2 b2b to b, business to business or business to consumer customer so b2b or b2c those are the terms that are used in international trade so you got to get familiarized uh in those terms and should understand how it works so creation of your own website is also very very important when it comes to uh finding uh buyers plus getting into um getting into a uh, export business then uh when you are thinking about the product i am i am now linking one by one additional every feature to the to the mainstream export thinking uh thinking product right now now you you know we are confident about the product now you should technically know how to get your buyers into your stream and get connections um then you have a website these are taking time you, that is why i said we got to put timelines against each activity and make sure that you, you achieve it then while you are doing that you must have a very solid sourcing plan and capacity to supply uh at when moment you have an export order confirm so the guys who are already doing exports always should look at your sourcing supply chain capacity quality we will come to quality so uh, as a point sourcing and capacity is a key that you should be knowing for example uh, there are items that will not be uh, those are seasonal right there are seasonal items there are items that will not be available for export uh for for the export condition if it is raining floods all those things should be in your mind when you are planning uh about sourcing of your items then when you have that you got to remember that you must have a quality product end of the day before it leaves the uh country if, if you are an ongoing exporter you have to maintain check continuously for the quality of the product and you must have your proper records maintained uh, by, by batch uh, by lot whichever the way the production according to items it varies within a lot, within a big parameter so whichever the way you must have your quality uh, quality records in place those who are trying to do it new should know it is not one shipment two shipment three shipments it's a continuous uh, continuous uh, process so therefore you got to maintain quality so keep that in mind and um, sourcing capacity supply and uh, quality paramount important then with all that you must get your objectives right and commitment right to the aligned goals which means okay if you are a startup okay now you know i am i my background is somewhat ready and now i am committed and i'm aligned to the required supply chain and then you are going to achieve that achieve the goal so while you are doing that you will come across certain questions so startup doing uh doing notes uh list down all your concerns 
uh, whatever you feel that uh, this might be a problem, then don't try to keep it in your mind alone. You just try to make notes and then make a list. There will be a lot of things, a lot of things that you get into your mind. So make a list and then speak with people who know, especially the advisors. Another uh, again, you have you have the uh, you have the option of contacting uh, Export Development Board. So speak to advisors. Then another important thing is with the, with whatever your export plan. Talk to your banker. You must have a solid bank through which you will start doing the transactions. So banks also, there are, there are sections where they will give you a little bit of financial advice about your, uh, when they know their, when, when, when they know your export plans. So make sure that you take some quality time and have a chat with your respective bank uh, or the bank manager. Uh, about your export plans. They too will be very, very handy once you start talking to them. Then also you must try and understand the list of, uh, list of agencies that will help or that might approve your uh, products, your exports, export clearances. So make sure that you write those list, uh, agencies down and in case if you these are specially for the for the startups uh, because the tendency is that you start certain things without a proper plan you get ultimately into a situation where it is so messy and people who have had this plan initially tend to give up so we are trying to tell you that a very structured path so that you will not come to that disappointing stage. You will have one, one activity, activity after the activity. You will have a very comfortable, smooth run so that you will enjoy what you are doing ultimately. So you develop a list of agencies that can help you on your transactions. Then, um, if possible, there are schemes available uh, where people can take you through your, your plans and advise you. There are export advisors. Uh, facilities are available with Export Development Board and other some, some chambers. So you got to uh, inquire about these things. And if possible, uh, if, when you come to a particular level, you get those guys, advisors to come in talk to you and take through the process. Now, we are coming to another very critical one. Now, when you are doing exports, when you're planning to uh, do exports and when you want to win the export market somewhere else, you must do some market research. So, you got to do some, devote, uh, allocate some quality time and do some market research. For example, if you're sending paper to a country, you should know through your buyer or even without, uh, without, getting a con without getting a confirmed buyer, you can still do market research and see how much of that particular product is being imported to that country. And uh, depending on the import quantities to, the, to that country, which means someone is exporting, and then that market research will give you quite a lot of, uh, it will create awareness within you about the markets, about the qualities, about the competition, who are the other countries from, what, what are the other countries that are exporting to this uh, importing country, kind of things like that. That is very, very important because that might give you an idea while you are um, doing the uh, when you are doing the researching that might give you an idea of why this country why not the other country what why am i doing this product why not i change my product to another uh, to an easy maybe uh, to, a, to a easy um, uh, to a easy stage or a product development uh, so that that could be lot of ideas that you will get when you do, when you start doing market research. 
Therefore, I suggest that you, you, most of the people are having uh, today uh, smartphones. That is like you are having the entire world at your fingertips. So I think you must technically try and do some research. Uh, call it time, uh, devote call it time and do some research and find out these things. Then you must know if you have a if you have a customer already, customer or customers, there's this thing called KYC and KYCC. You must understand your customer before you are executing or dispatching goods to him. You must know your customer. So KYC is know your customer. So um, when you find a customer, you must very uh, in, in a professional way, you must find out his background. Just because he, his, his words or communications show uh, big orders, high value items, and that probably creates uh, 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 probably creates a situation within the exporters and they are drawn into an imaginary world and they there are situations we know how people have fallen into trouble when you really don't know your customer. So knowing your customer, there are there are again you got to use the technology for that uh, search research through uh, the available data or through embassies. I mean depending on the size of the transaction, but otherwise, whichever the way you choose to be easy, please know your customer. Then there's the next step is know your customer's customer. Now, the person who gets down that goods, what does he do? Where does he sell? And that will be getting linked with the market research that you we discussed in the, in the, during the previous point, the, whether the market is actually sustainable or otherwise, because what happens is when you start doing an export, you will start investing at your origin in, in Sri Lanka. You will start investing on your production. So if you are no, if you are exporting to a customer who is not sustainable, all your investments are in in a dangerous situation where it will collapse. In case if the orders suddenly stop or he crashes, because he 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 also may be a startup, so he may be importing without knowing his customer. So these kind of conversations you must have with your customer from the start in case uh, I'm, I'm saying now I'm addressing uh, different kinds of people um, who, are, who have joined this uh, webinar. So if you're a new startup, this is very critical. But if you're a company that is already doing uh, business uh, short term in the sense you know, say one year old company, this is paramount important. Because now you are now is the time that you are investing more and more because you can you can you must be feeling that okay I am getting so much of strong orders nothing to worry, but there is lot to worry because the sustainability is always a question because, because the, the the buyer if you are if you are especially depending on one big buyer what happens if he if he if he if he changes his purchases to a different party. What are you going to do with your all investments and plans? And uh, we don't know. There are, could be companies that they have put up factories, invested on machineries, people. So you are you are into a big mess. Moment something goes wrong. So in international trade, always remember it's not like doing business locally. Locally, we can get into a vehicle, go and go and see a buyer, uh, go and see your buyer client, and see what happened. Or, or maybe you can even bring some of the stuff back, and you know various things can be done when your when your when your buyers are within your reach. But in international trade, there's nothing like that. You cannot reverse certain things. You have to go through huge losses if you don't do this. Look simple, but those are very very critical. So then um, also you must. Uh, Day one, you don't have to do all these things. Day one, maybe your small orders, small startups, uh, small actions. But remember these things in mind. Even your small startup, small action, you it's always better 
you find out these things uh, communicate ask that question and know to yourself that you are in a on a stable wicket that you are playing a game on a on good conditions then uh, who are your competitors it's very important don't think just because one person uh, gives you a couple of orders continuously that you are set for life no competition competitors can just come without you realizing they have simply overtaken you in terms of various things it could be cost it could be quality it could be value addition various things so you don't know you all the you think you have a firm set of orders don't stop and wait look for competitors and competition possible competition that can suddenly come up um then when you do these basic things you must now keep a uh, step forward and think about okay now if i when i uh, those who are already in it i uh, i propose that look at your own operation and see whether these fundamental things have been done and if it was done 3 years back why not you do another round because you will come across a lot of surprises when you do it because maybe certain things have been taken for granted and forgotten and you all have become very complacent in what you are doing and then suddenly when there is an issue it may be too late for you to go back and correct it the the, the the impact the cost impact would be very very serious in today's context especially we have absolutely no 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 chance of uh, of getting any financial impacts to anyone's business so then you got to think about a thing called harmonized system code which, which we call hs code hs code is a is a critical uh, code that you should know and it is a universal language every country whether it is import or export or for various other purposes also hs codes are used but for our, our understanding every exporter should know exactly what is your hs code for the items that you are exporting similarly there are very many instances where buyers clients are saying this is the hs code and use this and they will communicate that to the exporter but exporter cannot say just because i have got it from the buyer i am using this code that is how it has happened we have come across so many issues and we have certain places of course we have managed to correct it uh because people don't know they have simply taken a buyer said it i have accepted it there's nothing called buyer saying and you are accepting in international trade whatever buyer says there has to be a logical argument at your end before exporting what he says is whether it is right wrong or subject to correction because he also can be a startup who doesn't know and then when both parties doesn't know both parties will be in trouble both parties surely will be in trouble so i think we are not in situations where we got to face troubles and troubles and then correct it we must do it first time right that is the purpose of even conducting these kind of hundreds of um, workshops seminars webinars um, what not by export development board and so many other institutions what is the main focus try to make sure that you have a error free a business channel so knowing your hs code is critical how you uh, find out your hs code is there is a uh, first thing uh, again you can go through the internet and find out hs codes otherwise the most practical the best uh, option here is uh, you have the samples there is a hs code establishment method in the sri lanka customs uh, if you now in, in due, during this time there could be delays here and there because of the covid and you know there are restrictions of uh, people not being available but online tell on phone uh, or through a uh, customs house broker agent or you yourself or you yourself can download the uh, forms and apply for something called uh, advanced rolling 
with that confirmation from sri lanka customs you will know the exact number uh, the exact excess number for your item then what happens is then you got to refer to the tariff and understand what are the duty applicables uh, etc and also i will play you a video in a while uh, there is another important thing that sri lanka government uh, together with, uh, with um, from from the aid that we have got uh, we uh, department of commerce uh, has developed a website called sri lanka trade information portal it says sri lanka trade portal gov.lk you uh, if you go and search uh, trade information portal on your uh, on your on google it will give you uh, information portal uh, established by department of commerce there i'll try and play that video a little later uh, there you can get quite a lot of very very valuable information anyone any startup any startup or even a even a company who have not referred to this website please i request you please go through the trade information portal so so that you will have a very thorough knowledge about what you are doing whether you are exactly following uh, the right hs numbers the formalities processes laws etc there is so much of even the process charts uh, are there right now with this background you are technically you are ready to do an export you have a, a a a basic background of what you have to think how do i get a buyer how do i get confirmation or how how do i link with them and knowing him uh, better and then uh, about your capacities the qualities uh, and sourcing that kind of thing so then now what now if you are one of the main important things then is how do you get your prices right so prices right is something very very tricky you should not underprice your item neither you should overprice both have adverse impacts so for you to get to the right price levels then again you have to use the net to find out the prices available in those markets but those may not be really accurate but best thing is that you have to before if you are a startup you must get samples from those countries and through those samples you will know the prices available on shelf and you have to do a backward costing to see how things happen and then you will come to know uh, there is the points that we are saying is lot of work so that is why i said at the outset keep your date timelines short term goals long term goals and work towards it this is uh, doing exports is not ad hoc you have to do it in a with a, with a very proper plan so that uh, so that you will exactly end up safely that is very important the purpose of us saying you these things is not to fall into trouble you will have a very peaceful uh, journey if you do these basic things right from the start then uh, we have the now okay with this background assuming that you have some pending orders or some tentative orders then that is the time again that i suggest that uh, you refresh your mind about the if you in case if you have done a course or if you have spoken to a bank manager or to an advisor just refresh your mind because from the time that you started thinking and to up to the time that you are executing an order will be number of months or maybe we don't know even maybe a year so this is not easy so if you when you do all these things it takes time so then you have to refresh your mind about the procedures formalities etc and then uh, like we just said uh, when you uh, when you talk about the customs procedures customs are not only in this country you have to remember there is another border 
when you when you ship something from sri lanka borders yes it will cross our border and then again enters another border so the custom procedures formalities you must continuously have a chat with your buyer and understand whether what are the challenges that he probably face if it is a, if 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 this is going to be his first import you have to pay real attention or get advice in case if you are a fresher you will not know get advice from people who know that your buyer is having a problem like this or he is anticipating what do we do so what happens is you cannot we cannot stop just because you have sent an export saying that okay i have said it that's his problem no if you don't look after him you will not sustain your businesses you have to continue it is not one off export and wash your hands of no it is a continuous thing for you to continue for you to continue it so you must look after the interest of your uh, buyer as well um, the client so then according to your products now you are almost almost ready to do an export then your thinking line has to change now you have to think about your other service providers and the mode of transport so then now you got to think about the international shipping whether it is going to be sea freight whether it is going to be air freight so those are subjects on their own uh, sending goods by sea freight is a large subject by air freight is like but of course i am telling you certain points that you will remember uh see you must remember your product will be uh in transit for a long time then the temperatures that it goes through the humidity conditions the packing uh whether the moisture the container rain the humidity uh, converted to water whether it will spoil your goods those things have to be kept in your mind thinking okay my transit is so much so long whether your product is stable until it reaches destination then air freight is the other 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 thing which will go within a day or two but still whether it is also capturing uh, if there whether there is a temperature uh, fluctuation whether it can affect your goods and then the price when you are doing costings uh, air freight works both ways uh, prices work on uh, weight basis which is based on the gross weight and if it is light weight it will work on volume weight where the freight is very much larger so remember there is something called gross weight and volume weight in the air freight of course sea freight will work on cbms again even sea freight there could be weight if it is weight cargo there can be weight surcharges which are not very much but of course all those things come in all in freight Uh, so uh, you when you are when you are doing the shipping part uh, you always um, it's good for you to get all inclusive prices then while you are doing the uh, while you are looking at the shipping parts then you have the uh, export planning planning uh, how long uh, uh, how long your lead times and whether you have captured all those things in the pro forma invoice that you must send to your buyer before sending the goods because it will it will carry lot of information uh, about the goods so remember the term pro forma invoice is a document that will capture all information about your product which will go to your buyer and based on which he will he will accept the order so pro forma invoice is a separate document that uh, you got to uh, get familiarized for especially uh, startups but of course uh, the guys who are doing it just just double check whether your pro forma invoices are very complete uh, just because the title is there the document won't get completed then you come to export packaging and solutions and labeling and rules in the receiving country whether the language is in in uh, right font size uh, whether the whether there are language requirements in two different languages and then what are the what are the uh, what are the text and the 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 proportion of the the, the seals uh, the prints on the face sides uh, so there are that is called artwork you got to check your artworks before you send 
an export order. Uh, those are all can be done electronically. You can get the, the, the prints uh, beforehand, or if someone is um, doing the designing, uh, it's a it's a it's a bit of a discussion and a conversation that both parties should get involved and sort out uh, when it comes to labeling and packaging. Packaging again, uh, you got to look at uh, cost plus strength plus protection for goods, and those are called um, packaging solutions. So these things have to be thought and should be ready in place when you are sending a export order. That's why what happens is if you have not used the right packaging and packing, uh, you will have your cargo going uh, to the destination in a crushed form, damaged form, and all that what is not required by you uh, when you are doing the first, the second, the third, or initial exports, because then it can break your it can break a transaction. It can it can end up with a lot of losses for you. Uh, then the other one is uh, for you to do this documentation. If you are not aware, you must select a reliable customs house agent who will do the uh, operational work on behalf of you. And I'm using the word reliable is that do not look at low cost when you are selecting certain service providers. Go start with a reputed party. Uh, I don't think the charges are high, but even if it is high, you are paying for something, so for some comfort, for some accuracy, and for some uh, dependable service. So I think uh, cheap things will not uh, cheap uh, things will not give you good quality most of the time, not all the time. But of course, keep that in mind. Don't uh, don't work with uh, parties who are uh, um, parties who are not reputed. I will put it that way. Also, select similarly a reliable, reputed transporter. There are again your valuable shipments are being carried uh, through a transporter from a local inland point up to the up to the uh, port or airport. So that transport space itself can ruin your or damage your cargo. Or even there could be, you know, um, pilferage, etc. So you need proper service providers working with you. Then after that, uh, then you got to remember your freight forwarder or the shipping line equally is reliable because what happens is you are, when you are exporting, you have given a promise to an overseas buyer who is impatiently waiting for your order to come and for him to do his business and to do sales and then it's a cycle. So if you don't use your right parties here and suddenly a shipment doesn't move as planned, then what happens is there's a big hit on your buyer and he will call, he will think about you that you are not a dependable supplier, dependable exporter. So you've got to iron those things out, very important. Then, uh, before executing an order, uh, make sure that you have a confirmed order. And you will, my advice is you are not going to send any goods without a confirmed order on which that you will have so many other factors which we will discuss uh, in, a, in a minute. Uh, then, uh, confirmation is that it has to be in words that, okay, I hereby confirm your order, okay, dispatch me. I mean, I'm not saying that you've got to be very, very, uh, very uh, strict on these things, but remember, without a confirmation of an order you execute, uh, you are leaving gaps for you to fall in trouble from you or the other. Uh, in case if you are dealing with LCs, make sure that moment you get the LC, uh, you read and understand every word, every clause, every condition. Otherwise, you got to ask for LC amendments, even if it is costly. Uh, LC amendments uh, incurs a cost, but still, I, I strongly suggest that you must have your you must have your 
complete transaction clean before you start exporting goods. So you must have your sufficient lead times for shipping as well, especially if you are getting an LC. There are so much of conditions. If, if, you, if you are not familiar, get your bank to do the reading part and get some confirmations. Uh, uh, for looking for some discrepancies, if there are issues, make sure that you get it cleared, even your, uh, get help from bank or people who know uh, the international trade subject. Then, uh, if you now now we are in a situation where you are dealing with orders kind of thing, so then you must have your inventories build up to um, in in raw material form or other otherwise finished goods or whichever the way because you when you have to complete an order that is not the time that you are going to look for materials, so you must have your backup plans already ready when you are having some pending orders being confirmed. So this is one is linked to the other. It's a chain. Don't uh, don't uh, don't miss any of these things. Those are going to be very very critical when you are doing an export. Certainly, it's diff different from a local transaction. Then uh, you have to make sure your production processing. In case if, depending on the item, uh, your whether if if you are making use of a plant for some uh, production or for some packing. So you must know that plants have capacity according to your lead times. Then it comes to the payment terms. Payment terms uh, are the international payment terms that we are talking of. Uh, there are there are different different payment term, uh, terms uh, that are getting applied in international trade. So uh, a startup should know by now after getting these courses, talking to banks or talking to advisors, etc. You will know. What are these payment terms talking of? The basic terms are DP site, DA, documents against acceptance, LC, and then there are open account payments. There are high risk um, levels in those um, payment terms. So uh, uh, those are subjects itself, which we cannot cover within a 40-minute within a uh, window. So remember that you are very, very familiar with your payment terms. And the right payment term is in place. If you are giving credit, make sure that you know when you are going to get your money into your bank account. Credit, if it is credit, uh, now with the import, uh, sorry, uh, exporters doesn't uh, have that problem. But of course, importers into the country have that problem. Uh, where import export control has already implemented certain credit restrictions. So you got to be uh, you got to be vigilant about it, and you should be aware. Uh, you should have. Uh, Awareness about it. Then uh, we are talking of the INCO terms. Um, INCO term is the international uh, commercial term, uh, which is a set of guidelines issued by the International Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and the most common ones are CIF, FOB, CNF, uh, CFR, all that. So uh, we cannot go into specifics of those INCO terms and say uh, elaborate on those things. Uh, but uh, you must know in your transaction there's an INCO term and you know that if you are using CIF, you should know the buyer's role and responsibility about the term that you are using. What time that you are uh, handing over the goods, uh, to which point are you covering insurance, uh, To at which point are you transferring the title of goods, that kind of understanding you must uh, download or refer to the rule book of ICC, International Chamber of Commerce, understand your input term very well before you uh, send your exports. At the same time, if you are a, a party that who is already in business, make sure that you have, you, you revisit the input terms that you are dealing with. There could be couple of or two or three income terms that you're using depending on the bias. Whatever the income term, I strongly suggest that you look after, uh, read and understand your roles and responsibilities because it it is also another important area, same as payment terms, uh, that income terms will never guarantee your payment and it doesn't cover many things which I will touch in a while. So, um, when you're exporting, 
uh, you should know whether there are line ministries uh, in place for prior approvals. So that with customs formalities, uh, you technically should cover, uh, you should be aware of. And then, like I said, uh, uh, when you're using the Inco terms, it is like uh, you will, uh, the Inco term will very specifically, uh, very specifically define the obligations, uh, buyers and sellers, both obligations, cost and risks. Those three are uh, very well covered through the Inco term. Uh, during the time that the delivery of goods from seller to the buyer. So knowing your Inco term very well uh, is paramount important when you're doing exports. Exports or uh, imports and buyer equally should know the responsibilities. You equally should know these responsibilities. Then um, uh, it will not, like I told you, uh, Inco terms will not really cover uh, or guarantee uh, the credit terms, the price payables, the uh, the quality, various things are there. So remember to understand what elements that are covered uh, through the Inco term. And uh, take a look at the ICC uh, new uh, Inco term rule book 2020. And also the last two is um, publications are uh, one set of rules are there uh, in terms 2010 and the latest one is 2010 in terms rules 20, uh, 2020. So you are free to use whichever the way as long as uh, in your documentation the contract say uh, this shipment is as per the in terms uh, rules of 2020, 2020 or 2010. The, uh, very important to mention the year of publication because there are certain decisions, certain uh, conditions have changed from the from 2010 publication to 2020 publication. So we should not leave it open in case if there is a dispute. So uh, I will um, uh, come to the final part of it um, based on our, our, our time uh, window. When you are in international trade, you are open to high level of risks in very many ways. The first one, uh, I would say commercial risk. Commercial risk is the thing that unless you have got all your payment in advance before you execute goods, you are extremely lucky, very good. Uh, if you can um, uh, always agree on a term like uh, you get money in advance and then you ship goods, uh, your, your, your commercial risk is very much covered. But that does not mean just because you get money, you can ship whatever you want. No, you have contractual obligations. Whatever you have promised to your buyer should be within that standard and you have that obligation and your responsibility. Otherwise, you are breaking your own business uh, transactions. Then you have a political risk. Political risk is there could be funds frozen somewhere or, or borders can get locked down. Um, uh, goods can get um, goods can go through longer channels due to political risks, unrest, etc. So, when, wherever the countries that you are dealing with, you have to have that international trade uh, understanding, knowing your geographies, what are the situations happening. So, that kind of information is also very important, and always link it to your shipments and analyze and see whether my shipment can get affected or otherwise. Um, then uh, by the time when you are shipping something out of this country, there could be one law, but of course, halfway through, there could be another law. New laws would have come into those countries. So um, that kind of uh, situation has happened already in Sri Lanka. The shippers that were coming on water, suddenly overnight, there are gassets coming, um, restricting, banning, all those things are happening in Sri Lanka because of our credit situation. So those kind of situ similar situations can happen to you elsewhere because COVID pandemic has really changed the dimension of doing business. So keep um, keep an eye on these uh, things. And then the cargo risk. Cargo risk is insurance. Remember, uh, INCO terms uh, doesn't speak much about insurance, uh, insurance schemes, insurance uh, uh, policies, uh, and uh, Currently, with the 2020 Inco term, uh, CIF and CIP has 
separate income term uh, requirements sorry insurance requirements uh, one uh, demands the cargo clause c and one request cargo clause a cip requires cargo clause uh, a so uh, remember there are different level of covers so you have to uh, exactly look at your policies and see whether you have really covered your risks insurance is uh, not a part to ignore most of the people doesn't even think about insurance you must make sure that you cover your goods from your door whether whether you are responsible or your buyer is responsible someone has to cover the entire space end to end remember that then the credit risk uh, credit risk is the thing that uh, if you are given credit and then something somewhere down the line happens there is a risk so there are there are tools to uh, use but of course i will not suggest those kind of high level tools uh, for a forum like this for established companies you can take export credit insurance but of course those have different other uh, other formalities to do and then there are lot of uh, uh, checking to be done and there are lot of procedures to follow it takes it also at uh, a substantial amount of cost so but there are tools if you really want to cover your credit risk as well so with that i think i have covered a, a, a good area but i know that um, but i know within a frame a window like this uh, covering uh, covering uh, uh, international trade is very very difficult but of course um, uh, i have covered uh, a lot a uh, lot of information uh, within this one hour uh, i will just want to play the uh, i want to play this uh, wait a bit No, it's for some reason it's not working. Right. Okay. Well, you all can uh, refer to uh, those who have uh, those who have uh, taken down uh, a note. Uh, it goes as Sri Lanka Trade Information Portal. So, if you uh, type uh, Sri Lanka Trade uh, Portal, you can see large amount of information. so with that i will uh, request um, mr indrakeet to take over and uh, go for a q and a whatever available uh, thank you very much dinesh uh, uh, there were enormous questions we received but finally i can say a happy news that you have covered and you have answered uh, that mean uh, with your presentation i think many of the questions uh, have been answered right so okay. uh, we have selected few questions okay uh, uh, one is uh, mr veerakon is asking is it necessary to bring down export remittances for exported goods through a bank so obviously uh, you have to use the banking channels uh, you don't uh, hand carry cash and come and pay you so you have to Um, go through the exchange control regulations and use the accepted payment terms for all your exports or imports that's the answer uh, not that we are not aware of trade practices but still you we, we we suggest you use the official channels and banking channel is the number one uh, way of uh, getting your remittances thank you i think uh, is uh, that is the correct uh, answer that uh, uh the the everyone expect and uh, another one is uh, you discussed about market research correct yeah can i get reliable source of information any suggestion yeah um technically uh, market information is uh, like we have just said in one two sentences market research itself there are lots of uh, websites 
uh, which we, we, we can subsequently share maybe through uh, export development board. Uh, there are websites where, uh, if, don't forget, every country will have a trade portal like we have. So you can access those things and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process that you have to go through and find out uh, this information, especially through websites. Then you can get market information through embassies, uh, trade chambers. All those guys will have uh, information of that nature. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process that you have to go through. It's a job itself that you have to spend some quality time and uh, go, go go through, do it. Okay. Uh, one uh, few few. Uh... Questions. Uh, maybe we can select three out of that. Uh, one is asking you to a little elaborate on uh, advanced rolling because it's a new term for them. Okay. You couple with the uh, customs procedure and HS number. So, yes. little elaboration Ad on uh, advanced rolling. Yeah, advanced rolling. Uh, who, who has asked it? Very good. Because um, without knowing without knowing your actual HS number, you are dealing in international trade means you are into disaster. One moment we don't know what point. So therefore, uh, it is uh, uh, it's about a three week or four week process at Sri Lanka Customs. You only have to uh, download your application forms. You have to attach the performer invoice, a literature to identify what this product is, and then catalogs if necessary and the samples and submit to Sri Lanka Customs, they will uh, analyze that product. If it is, if, it, if uh, chemical compositions, etc., if they want to analyze it, they will do that. Uh, they are experts in that area. So you will get an official document from the government, that is Sri Lanka Customs, saying that your item is uh, a, a, the, the, the correct HS number for your item is uh, XYZ. So with that, that's a, uh, license for you to show any board agency that you have uh, in the correct way in, in in right channels you have got your items certified for the right hs now so it is a very good thing you got to do it thanks and uh, a small addition on market intelligence uh, that means market reports uh, the anyone can contact the edb we also can uh, help you with a certain level of uh, the market intelligence reports and there are some reports are available in the edb website as well they published uh, one can go and refer the website and one thing i have to add the you mentioned that uh, uh, e market that edb also has that been established e market place uh, anyone can get that we not anyone but there's there is a criteria but smes and exporters can get registered with the e-marketplace of the EDB. Uh, there is a guideline in the EDB website. So just please visit and register yourself at the EDB e-marketplace. Uh, uh, our, our IT department will help you to proceed. And uh, another question. Uh, this is uh, uh, the interesting point that uh, the the very recently, a couple of days ago, that uh, Minister of Industries launched uh, the Made in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And uh, someone is asking that uh, that means the branding. Okay. What is the most critical factor to be focused on by an uh, uh, exporter that means or uh, startups or the SMEs on branding? What is your advice? What is the most critical factor to be focused on? A pretty brilliant question. You see, when you brand something, it is like uh, that's the that's the most precious thing that you can have is your brand name. Your as a person, it's the credibility, the image, all that. So for a for a for a ship for a for a product, if you spoil your brand, and there is no future. So brand is all about keeping that quality continuously. So that has so much of growth going down to your sourcing, if it is organic especially. So you have to have your roots right, uh, channels right, and you cannot compromise quality if you want to bring, uh, if you want to build 
a brand image. So quality is number one when it comes to now. If you are branding, um, branding um, made in Sri Lanka, so every part of the world customers should moments uh, they say, okay, this product is coming from in, uh, Sri Lanka. They must in their minds they must have that image, that impression. Okay, this is quality. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, with that, you have the opportunity of having your price also level, uh, mark at a particular level. So people will go for it once you establish it. Yeah. Uh, one critical question. Uh, he, uh, Mr. Namal is asking if any exporter got failed to receive money from a buyer for what they exported, if there are any way that can get help through EDV or Consulate General in overseas, or that we are the other options or oh, solutions that can that an exporter can look from you all. I think you and me together have to answer for this. Yeah. So I think um, uh, I think uh, when I was um, going through the basic things that you got to do, if you have done those basics right, except for a sudden financial problem, if you are not getting a payment, that still is negotiable. But if you have not done your homework right, and if you have got caught to a fraudulent uh, transaction, then very unfortunate, very many people will not be able to help you. So therefore, that is why we take time and try to tell you have to go through the right way of establishing a transaction. So suddenly someone defaulting on a payment, if, still if you have gone through right channels, right accepted payment methods, except for giving credit. If you have gone on documents against payment, letter of credit, you won't have a situation like that. If you have gone uh, with the safest mode of getting payment in advance, if possible, you don't have a problem like that. Especially when it comes to open account and DA, documents against acceptance and new gift credit. So that is a commercial call that the individual exporter takes. And supposing if they don't pay you, then again, very, I mean, you can go with industry, uh, you know, dispute um, court cases and all that legal action. But uh, you will only understand the mistakes that you have done only after you consulting legal consultants and very little that people can help you. Uh, and if you have a specific problem uh, through ADB, uh, you can uh, contact and we, we, we might be able to give you answers, right answers. I don't know what, what's the context of this. But uh, whatever the right uh, right feedback we can give you if you wrote that uh, specific problem to uh, through uh, ADB. Yes, Dinesh, ex uh, the, correctly you said, uh, the, please write to us. Uh, and uh, the Department of Commerce also helping you to resolve such kind of issues. Uh, it's a process that uh, uh, we have to discuss with uh, the, the person who affected party here in Sri Lanka. By the other way, the same may happen right way around, right? So things are coming and uh, the EDB and uh, the Department of Commerce, uh, uh, we can help you to resolve such an, uh, the, the problem. And the questions are coming, Dinesh, uh, the, the chains of questions, but uh, we'll try our best uh, uh, to maybe two questions, two more questions. But, but, but still, I suggest, uh, Mr. Indagiti, uh, take all those questions and we can even subsequently uh, contact definitely. them or give them some relief. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely, that yeah. uh, uh, I have a buyer, uh, Mr. Samsudin. He has a buyer in Iran. How can I export and get the proceeds to Sri Lanka through which bank? Uh, Mr. Samsudin, uh, uh, I think um, uh, we will contact Mr. Samsudin and answer it, answer to the answer to this uh, the question. And uh, yes, Dinesh. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know whether he has already sent uh, sent some exports and want to establish a payment or before the shipments, whether he wants to establish the payment method, uh, that I don't know, but we will uh, contact them offline and uh, give them the required uh, necessary inputs. Yes. Uh, 
and uh, is there any platform to register the trademarks in internationally or exporting country i think this question uh, okay dinesh Intra intellectual property is the uh, uh, platform that you got to register all your brands and that is uh, accepted worldwide okay uh from that uh, dinesh i think the time uh, we uh, got uh, a little more time uh, we uh, we have the we we scratched all questions and uh, we will try uh, not try really we, we we will answer to your questions uh, some remaining questions are there so uh, it is very happy to uh, say this uh, uh, today we have a very very informative uh, Uh, very elegant uh, the presentation from you uh, to you covered almost all aspects uh, of uh, uh, the international trade trade and uh, how uh, 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 small and medium scale entrepreneur or startups uh, the people who should proceed and what are the key elements to be uh, concentrate and consider and uh, as you said uh, one hour is not enough Uh, we will try our best to have another session with uh, dinesh uh, to cover some uh, points and subject areas in depth so thank you very much uh, dear participants and mr dinesh uh, for your in, in the case of just presentation yeah just, just one more thing right so i i started I, my flyer started with cricket i want to end up with cricket so it's like playing a game uh, you have to remember that uh your deliveries are online concentrate plan well play the game well if you want to survive in uh, international trade uh, for a long time uh, the, the the regulatory bodies are like umpires you will you will get ruled out if you don't follow the right rules and then on top of that we have third umpires which is the legal background so you play this game plan it well you will be uh, a successful uh, businessman okay thanks uh, in the case thanks and finally uh, it is uh, uh, my duty to say you that edb is here uh, to help you as dinesh said in many areas please uh, visit our website and understand what are the uh, the, the areas uh, of our facilitation and services uh, almost all services are free and uh, but very valuable and uh, we are spending a lot to give you those uh, services and thank you very much you are willingly uh, support uh, dinesh uh, always you are you know the, the years you are have been working with us years and years thank you very much uh, uh, and uh, the dear participants uh, i appreciate your presence it's a big number of pr the presence that uh, Uh, you showed your keen interest on these subjects and our webinar series uh, we are doing this weekly this is 30th one we are happy to announce that as well uh, we have good participation good responses and everything is going on well thank you very much and see you then uh, uh, in the next webinar thank you very much thank you very much thank you